Hi, in this work we analyze how rigid objects fall and rest on the ground. Consider a fair six-sided dice. How do we know that each of its sides have equal probabilities? You could either check this out by rolling it on the ground thousands of times and recording the statistics, or you could make a geometric argument. Because this shape is symmetric, each of its sides should have equal probabilities. But what about a more general and complex shape, like this peatlet model? That has actually been used as an unfair dice in this board game. This shape is no longer symmetric, so you cannot make the same argument. You could take the empirical approach and try rolling it on the ground, say in a physic in a rigid body simulator, and record the statistics, which could take up to hours in a modern and reliable simulator. You could also do physical experiments, which people have done in the past and recorded these statistics by doing 6,000 physical rolls. You could imagine how long that could take. We propose an algorithm that finds these probabilities purely geometrically, meaning it requires no numerical integration or physics simulation. It's extremely fast and it is differentiable. Here's the problem setup. Imagine you rotate the object randomly and let it fall on the ground. Then the ratio of these falls that end up at the same resting orientation correspond to the probability of that resting orientation. Instead of sampling rotations from all of SO3, we observe that our problem setup is symmetric with respect to z-axis rotations. That means if we take a reference pose, then we can identify other orientations by a unit vector or a point on the unit sphere. Then, to understand how the shape falls and rolls on the ground, we assign a function to each of these orientations. This function measures the potential energy of the object, and it is the distance of the center of mass to the ground when the shape is touching the ground. Then if we measure this potential energy at every orientation, we end up with a continuous function on the unit sphere. This function has some nice properties. First of all, we can compute everything about it using only the convex hull and center of mass of the input. Intuitively, this is because only the convex hull points come in contact with the ground. Also, the local minima of this function correspond exactly to stable orientations of the shape. Now, if we orient the object with an initial orientation and let it fall on the ground, the orientation changes until it ends up at a local minima that corresponds to the stable orientation. If we do this for many initial orientations and record their final uh, local minima, then the ratio of the initial orientations that lead to the same local minimum corresponds to the probability of that stable orientation. If you look at one of these falling instances, you see that the orientation follows a rather complicated trajectory until it stabilizes at the local minimum. Instead, we make a simplifying assumption. We assume that the orientation only follows the gradient direction of this function. This assumption is similar to assuming that the shape is falling in a viscous liquid. And even though it may look Limiting for a single drop, single drop instance, it has negligible effects in practice on the probabilities that we are trying to compute. This assumption not only simplifies the trajectories that we were trying to compute, but also we no longer need to sample random initial orientations. All the initial orientations that lead to the same local minimum are exactly in the ascending manifold of the local minimum. Intuitively, an ascending manifold is a bowl-shaped region around the local minimum. Once we compute these ascending manifolds, then we can compute their area and divide by the area of the whole sphere, and that gives us the probability of their corresponding local minimum. These ascending manifolds are a part of a more general structure that is defined for any function on any domain. This is called the Morse-Smale complex, and it defines how critical points of a function 
connect with each other by following the gradient flow. To find this structure, first we find the saddle points of the function, then we follow the path of the gradient until we get to local maxima. And that gives us exactly the ascending manifolds corresponding to each and every local minimum. To compute this structure and follow the gradients, instead of using numerical integration and taking step sizes, we use a special structure of this function that carries over from the Gauss map of the convex hull of the input. Intuitively, in every Gauss map patch, our function behaves linearly. And that means we can follow the gradients without the need for numerical integration and in an exact manner. We can finally compute the probabilities that we wanted. Every stable orientation has a local minima that has a corresponding ascending manifold. And once we compute their areas, we get exactly the probabilities that we wanted. Just to compare this with the earlier study that we mentioned, we see that our method and this physical study are a pretty close match. They differ by a maximum of around 3% in each stable orientation probability. This whole procedure takes less than 3 milliseconds for this model that has more than 1600 convex hull vertices. If we wanted to do this in a rigid body simulation by, let's say, dropping it a thousand times, it could have taken up to an hour. We can do this for any model, all in fraction of a second. Here we have laid each of these models on their most uh, on their most probable orientation. We also compare our method with rigid body simulation. We take 700 shapes from the Breaking Bad dataset and drop them on the ground thousands of times using, using rigid IPC. And as we can see, our method is a pretty close match to these simulation results. For more than 90% of these shapes, our probabilities differ by only 5%. Our method is also differentiable. That means we can design shapes with probabilities that we want. For example, take this simple 2D example with this distribution. And let's say we want it to have a uniform distribution. We can use the derivatives of the probabilities that we have computed to minimize uh, a simple energy like this quadratic one. After modifying the geometry, we can end up with a geometry that has exactly the probabilities that we want. And we can do this for any distribution that we want. For example, here we take this shape with three stable configurations, all with equal probabilities. And we want to turn it into a shape that has this, this distribution that is similar to a binomial distribution equivalent to two coin flips. After optimizing this shape, we end up with a shape that has exactly the probabilities that we want. We 3D print this shape and do physical experiments with it by, roll, by tossing it on the ground 300 times. Even though our experiments have a lot of momentum and balances, we can see that our uh, estimate probabilities and the experiments are a pretty close match. Here's another example where we aim to design a shape uh, that simulates two dice rolls. We start with a shape that has 11 stable sides with this distribution, and after optimizing it, we end up with a shape that has the probabilities that we want. We also 3D print this shape, and we do experiments with it. This time by doing a thousand tosses. Again, we see that experiments and our estimates are a decent match. We also create some concave dice by starting from some common models in computer graphics and turning them into fair three sided dice. You can download and experiment with all of these models in our project website. In future, it might be possible to incorporate momentum into our purely geometric algorithm. 
Also, our method suffers from noisy Morse complex regions, and it would benefit from prior work on topological simplification. It is also possible to apply our method to continuous shapes. In the end, I would like to say thanks to our funding agencies, and thank you for listening. Make sure to check out our website and enjoy playing with our dice.